Welcome everybody. My name's Erin and I'm gonna help you. Uh, I'm gonna be modeling some stoats or a stoat that is currently armless. And as you can see, um, we have a tail on him. He's got the legs pretty much figured out, and his face is also pretty much figured out. And then I had started on adding in some arms, but they obviously need some work. So that's what we're working on for this next hour. If you have any questions, please ask, and I'll try and explain what I'm doing as I'm going along. So first things first, I kind of want to make sure that like I have him in like a true T pose for the most part. Like I want his arms to be set up towards the front, not um, traditionally. You would actually probably have the arms more set up to be about there because this is where about human arms probably would rest but for now we want them to actually be up in front or further up because of how we're planning on having our characters um, be, be relaxed and like we want their shoulders to be farther forward because that's where um, normal real animals have their shoulders as their shoulders tend to be towards the front Hello everyone, glad you guys can make it. So yeah, like I'm planning on having, because you can't tell, like right about here, that'll be where the elbow is. This here is obviously the shoulder, and then this is the beginnings of the hand, which the hand needs a lot of work, which is actually probably where I'm going to be starting. I don't know if I've actually said hi to anyone. Hello everyone. Glad you guys make it. It's nice for you guys to stop by. Thanks for coming, coming Andrew, Francisco, and Rackety. It's really great to have you guys here. Hello, Bob. I just had to pull up a reference really quickly because I was realizing, oh, my hands, I don't have my concepts, my, my concept I'm working off of up here, which I can quickly show you guys actually what that looks like. This is the concept I'm working on. I, I did it a while, a little bit ago. It's like, some of it's not completely like cleared out, but um, just doing the model today, I don't think I'll have time to get to texturing because texturing involves um, redoing the mesh work for it I call it in a process called retopo retopoing and so I'd, I don't th I'd maybe get to the retopoing stage but not coloring so but this is what I'm working off of these are going to be two of our main stoats other than the fact that they currently don't have any clothes but I'm using this as a basis to get this guy done so I'm, and I'm referencing the picture the image a lot to make sure it's like is this how I want the paces to look is this working not sure maybe it is so that gets to sit up right up there where you guys can't see it, but where I can. Right now I'm gonna add in some fingers. Oh, that's called the shader. It has a little bit of a texture and I can change kind of what it looks like. Like I, it's why I have, um, I made the eyes specifically black. Like this, the eyes are on their own layer. So I may, if I click on the eye layer, I can make them look like everything else by clicking on different shader over here on the right. I, I made a shader that was black specifically for when I was 
um, working it, I was wanting to separate out eyes from the regular um, texture. And when we bake it, to, so we can do texturing and all the coloring, we don't use the shaders, we, we use um, different textures. But these kind of help with the pre stuff. But they can make them look really fun, like, um, if I get rid of the arms, because the arms won't be affected by this. Actually, I'll keep them in. I can make it look like it's made out, sculpted out of bronze. Or like, rusted gold. And, it, and like you can see the interesting, it just, it becomes really interesting and and intriguing to me at least. I like working, personally I like working in this one the best. It does look, I like making it look like clay because it makes it feel a little bit more real in a sense. So I like, this is the way I like working out of it best. Although I have it, I, as a default, I have it set to white. And sometimes actually when I start working in clothing, like pretend that the, the arms are a jacket or something. I, if I have the body and I'm starting to add clothing in, I'll try and color them to be to the basic color I want them to be for later, just so I have a visual separation. Oops, I didn't want to do that one. It's so like if I go over to the arms and I, I pretend this is like the beginnings of a jacket, I might set it to a green because I know the jacket later on is going to be green. I don't know if there's a sh if there is a shader that set that makes that work. I think the closest might be that. <laughs> doesn't really glow in the dark. Or, wait, are you talking about this one right here? I think this one's called frog skin. Yeah, this is called frog skin. You can see it right there. Anyway, th that's what that's what the, that's why it looks like it's already textured. It is kind of, but it's only the start of it. Anyway, I was working I was thinking about getting these guys right giving him some fingers and in this case I don't want him to be in perspective mode this is perspective mode this is how you view it mostly in a game and stuff like that this is called the orthopedic mode it keeps everything in line like no matter which angle you're at and so I'm going to look at it from the top it makes it so I know exactly how like if things are exactly lined up or not it's a lot easier to work with especially when placing things but then I like going between each of the modes So I'm going to place the thumb first. Make it probably a little bit shorter. And I currently have it rotating around the hand. Like, but I could easily make it so it rotated way back here around the, the tail. But that doesn't help me at all since I want to keep it around the hand. Should be about right. I'm gonna make it maybe a little bit thicker by uh, grabbing this blue ring right here. If it, if I can grab it, there we go. <laughs> it's like not working for me. And now you can see like it wasn't it wasn't actually in it. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna look at my reference really quickly, and I'm gonna go like. Oops, did not mean to do that. And I'm going to set it so it's like that, because I don't want the th thumb to be like straight out. I mean, it could be. But that looks about right, and it actually looks a little bit too thick. Maybe not. I'll leave it like that for now. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that, and then I'm going to turn this and start working on fingers. Actually, no, I'm going to go back and yeah, make this a little bit thinner. Now I'm going to turn, not the whole model, just this cylinder that I'm working with. And all I'm doing is I'm applying primitives. And this guy has four fingers. Yes. So I need to make sure there's room for four fingers. I also want to give it a little bit more finger finger length. I can always cut something off if I need to or add something later. Front, where is this at? And I want it to actually be angled down a little bit. And go back up here and I'm going to turn it. It goes out like that. Pull it in a little bit, move it to the side. 
apply it. So this is our first finger. Gonna move it there. Gonna compare this to there so it's not like out of place. Now go back up here. It looks like it's probably a little bit too. There we go. Some of this tends to be like just guesswork for my part, or what I think might look right, but I'm experimenting to see. Does this look good? Yeah, this looks good. Um, probably not, but that's also not up to me to decide. Um, like, I think what will happen is that the thumb and then the fingers will have more of like a glove effect on the articulation for the animation side, but I'm not the one doing the animations. Hello. I'm, is it Matnik? I don't know how to pronounce your name. I can rec I can tell that there's some uh, characters that I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> I'm going to call you Matt for now if that's alright. Otherwise you're going to have to correct me. You could totally correct me. So right now these are turning out oh, fairly human-like. Like just in terms of placement. But we want to have their hands be a little bit more human because it helps. Um, one, because with stoats they actually do have... Actually, give me a second. I need to go quickly and double check something. Yeah, they actually do have a fairly human like overall, although like their pinkies are really short. I'm going to show you guys this picture that I just I, I got up as a really brief. This is my reference picture that I'm pulling from. Just like, okay, here's the here's the back, but here's the front. It's like, so if this is the case, then I actually should, then that means that this one right here, this the first finger that I put placed down, not the thumb, but the first finger, was actually too long. But that, I can cut that off. That also means that this one here gets to be shorter, pulled in like that. Probably can be made skinnier. Fly. Go back to this. Now I'm going to use one of my favorite tools called Cutoff, where I literally just cut things shorter. And now I have the beginnings of the beginnings of my hand. All the ba the basis makes it rather easy to work with. I just realized I put that finger way too high. So I'm going to go back a little bit. Gonna go up here, turn it out a little bit. Then I'm gonna look at it from the back because. Pull it out a little bit, push it in. That looks better to me. And once I have that applied, I'm going to go ahead and then go back to this. I'm going to need to cut off this finger again, make it a little shorter. It's always in my mind is always okay like if I need to add if I add too much of something because it's easier to it's always there's always a way to add or take away from something like I ended up actually to get this little curve on the stomach here I actually put in a really giant sphere and like basically added in on top of it just so I could get the curve right because it was like this this desires a little bit more of a curve here that I can't create on my own just by by hand and then I used a bunch of um, spheres to actually build out the arm. And to be honest, uh, so fingers can be some- uh, hands in almost all uh, art, like, disciplines, art can be some of, some of the hardest things to create. Like from the drawing side, sculpting side, animation side, they almost always have complications of some sort. So, I may not be able to finish this with you guys. I might get it to a point where it's like, I can't, 
I need to kind of work on this by the end of, get to the end of the hour. Be like, I need to keep working on this. Because these guys, this is not done. This is not where I want it to be. Or my X go really fast. I don't know yet. So before when um, I put the body into this shader, you can see all that little like detail of like it looks like there's actually bone underneath there, which is more obvious in that it's a like, kind of bronze shader than the current shader I'm working with. I want the same kind of effect for up here on this, but I don't need the effect at the same time because uh, pa the, the paws aren't going to be that articulate. I almost forgot that I took my paws from earlier and never put them back up. I'm currently using 3D Coat. It's a um, basically a cheaper version of Mudbox or no, not Mudbox. I'm forgetting program names. But I'm using a program called 3D Coat. Currently 4.7.06. That's the version I have, but there's been an update recently so I think they're on 4.20 is their most recent update and they have a, the, the 3d coat community has a really good feedback system and they are um, and actually one of our co-workers found a bug that was really irritating for us to have to work around and gave feedback to the developers and they came back and actually have been working on that and they, they, they currently have a uh, a beta of, of 3d coat that it's testing out a different system that will help solve that issue that he discovered. You guys have seen Jeremy work before. Talk about Jeremy. So now I'm just kind of sculpting, I mean, I'm scraping away pieces so like it's not nearly so like bulgy because it doesn't need to be this bulgy. Um, the tool I'm using, I'm, I'm switching between these three primarily. Um, pinch I use every once in a while, but primarily use pinch when I'm making claws. But I use grow and scrape for the most part. Grow, um, uh, so like right now this, this is how I can use grow. Grow creates, if I, especially if I turn on a pie, you can see, it just creates a, a lot of like grows off of the sculpt, all of the sculpture versus with scrape, it takes away from the sculpture culture and it, it makes it a lot easier and the thing is I could use um, the reverse version of, of grow but it makes for a lot bigger indents than I want so I find that at scrape I have a little bit more control with it and to, and to talk about what you're doing uh, about, uh, and for, uh, the asymmetry that you talked about Francisco um, it depend right now I'm creating a generic model for a stoat um, and for our current stoats they aren't going to be asymmetrical um, they are actually fairly symmetrical. The texturizing will be different. Like um, these, like for example, these two. Like if I bring these two again, um, like their fur, everything pretty much about them is 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 symmetrical. The difference is with Olo. He has he's younger and he still has some orange in his fur. And um, from his summer coat transitioning to the winter coat. Um, versus Velo doesn't have any of the summer coat right now because this is in the middle of winter and stoats get white coats when they're in the north. 
So um, the texture part for these guys will be not symmetrical. But I try and get as much of the symmetry done as possible, like when it comes to doing scars or lost things, or like, like even if I was to take away one, like for example, say Velo right here does, has only one arm. Because this model is actually going to be probably going to be used for both of them, or at least as a basis for both of them, they'll have different clothing, but just the one, um, they both have different clothing, that, that's that, and then their textures are going to be what they set them apart, not their base model. And because of that, um, these guys aren't going to have much in ter difference in terms of what I'm working on right now. But, say I wanted it not to be symmetrical, I just press S, I disable symmetri symmetry, and I can just go through, probably press 5 to go here, use my cutoff tool, and go like this. Just cut off all that work I did on that side, including those tips of the fingers, don't need them there. And then, hey, th there, it's no longer symmetrical. So that's, that was, but at this stage, it's still early enough on that even if I was like maybe only adding a scar or two to differentiate them, I wouldn't be adding them at this stage. That's for later after I finalize the, like finalize the hands and details. Like maybe, maybe the face is at a point where I could start adding that kind of detail, but it doesn't need to, especially because they have very fuzzy faces. Um, I know that when I was working on um, one of our other models, a guy named Scum Snout, I didn't have to worry about him looking the same. He is a unique character, and so he has a bunch of scars on him that I was like, I can work on these. This will be fine. And they can, like, and I can have a scar on just, just his right shoulder. Or, actually, I think, I can't, no, he doesn't have the ears. Um, like, and it's one of those things that I might develop, I might look into a rat model that has a, has only one ear instead. So, but that's, a, that's something to decide later on and not at the beginning stages that this currently is, where I'm just developing this, the 3D model, I'm developing the whole sculpture of it. And I have even gotten to the point where it's like, okay, this can, this, this as it is cannot be used in a game or even in like a movie or anything like that, unless you're just taking a screenshot of what I'm doing right now. And then in regards to the pads, um, probably not. These guys kind of will, but we're probably going to cover them with fur because, uh, mostly because, mm, I think I'm just going to say because we could, but we're also trying to make their, their hands will be a little bit more like humanish, flush, stuff like that, working towards that. Okay, this actually looks way too human like now that I'm looking at it. I'm going to make a decision right now to get like this and cut off this finger. That's going to help him feel much more like an animal or not human like. And also. Go into that. It's just not coming off fast enough for what I was hoping to do. And I can always go back and add in a, a finger if I need to. Or these, it's like I said before, I don't think I'm going to have time today to finish off the hands for you. Or even finish off this whole, this, at least this whole model. And I'll probably need other people to, I'll have Gavin and I'll get some feedback from my coworkers on where this is at. It's like, yeah, we want this to be how it, I mean, this is where we want it to be. And it's like, yeah, this is mostly it. That's not quite there. Does this look better with three fingers or four fingers? So. What I just did, by the way, is I held shift and see that how there's a green circle on top is it smooths things out. It averages out all the points that you see or all the invisible points on the model that it's working with because it's a digital format. And I can do that from almost any tool I'm using. little bit too strong so I'm going to decrease the strength. Go over to grow. I 
I'm still on scrape, not grow. Oh, okay. For some reason, grow got taken off my one pad. I don't need it that strong. I just want a light touch. Just kind of fill in that spot. Now I'm going to go ahead and smooth this whole thing out. Makes it look smoother because that's the whole point of that tool. I need a scrape because I don't want this right here. And now this is just looking kind of weird. Like I haven't done much in terms of getting these fingers the way I want them. I'm looking at it and like realizing I might have... I, I probably need to... I need to put some more work into these guys. Based off what I did down there, I'm actually going to use the smooth tool to kind of trick it into being a little bit smoother. This isn't working. Why is this not working? Yeah. See how it kind of like brought the bump in a little bit? And that went a little too much on that side. There we go. I'll probably want to just stick to the bottom. No, come over to the side. Yeah, I can see there's a little bit of that. I'm currently using the smooth tool to trick these points into kind of um, shrinking in on themselves. Without like, ruining all of the... Without ruining a bunch of of the of like roundness of the fingers right now. Eventually these are gonna have claws in them as well. I could actually put them on right now. I'm not going to just yet. This can be a slow process. Like I said earlier, the hands can be some of the hardest things to work with or work on. Okay, so what I'm currently doing is I'm using the pose tool to readjust my current, the current uh, finger into like maneuver where it is. Although I forgot that. This thing's being stupid only of grabbing from that part. I don't know why. There. For some reason it disappeared on me. Currently trying to just grab all the parts that I want without grabbing the parts I don't want. But I also have to work around the fact that there's this big transform tool right on top of it. This might help. Actually, this is helpful. Makes it so much easier. There we go. I'm going to take this, reset the axis, and just pull it back a little bit. Okay, <laughs> so currently I'm missing stuff when I'm just grabbing things. And I'm also going to extend this out because I don't like how chubby these guys are. I just kind of want to just shrink them a little bit. But... I 
I'm going to see if this helps. I'm going to do this to all the fingers. Now that I think about it, I probably should have done that before. I could have just done that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Do that. Pull this back. Tilt it a little bit. Let's go with that for now. You can see it's kind of messed up, so I actually go in and I just fill this in. Or I, I smooth it out. That whole averaging out of pieces becomes very useful right here. about how I want to do this because I have them thicker like this but I kind of want to actually go ahead and cut them any of the progress I just did and did that and it looks really wonky but we'll see how that works and I'm gonna smooth out these edges that got created because of the wonkiness but I already feel better about how this shape feels Was a little too strong of a smooth job. Now it looks like they're too thin, and this is why. like that. I'm actually going to go ahead and I am going to add in a fourth finger if they're going to be like long and spindly like this. Oh gosh, yes. It looks like a rooster. Hello. So...
trying to think if like, that would help at all to do that. And as you can see, there's obviously some stuff I forgot to grab. His hands, for some reason, are not working the way I want them to. Want them to. Just, they're, or at least they're not coming nearly as cleanly as I would like. I'll leave it like that for now. See if I can come see if I can make it work still. But for now I think I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> now it's a half rooster stout, exactly. Um I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually work on this connection up here take a little bit of a break from there and then see if there's anything else I can work on in other places like maybe see if these uh, the ears need to be brought up a little bit or just smoothing out and working on the tail like again it does look like it's carved and so to do this I go here then there is a merge with or move to body layer and now it's all the same thing it's great I like this Makes it work out a little bit. Makes it the, makes it easier. Like when adding something in, I can go ahead and add an arms and be able to place them where I want, wherever along the whole body. And figure out, like, yeah, this is where I want. Without having to use the clips tool that gets can get in the way sometimes. Changing the, the camera rotates around so we can do some crazy, wacky, wild things. I'm just kind of filling in a little bit. I'm kind of just putting in some stuff right now to kind of like make this a little bit more seamless. Um, but after it's, after, but I'm actually going to also go back through and scrape everything off. I scrape through, scrape everything so it can be a little also seamless there. I also want to make sure that this. I'm using a digital pen. I actually work, um, my whole computer is a tablet. I work on a Wacom, a Cintiq Companion 2. So I'm, I'm drawing directly on a screen right now. It's not necessary to work this way. Um, for example, my coworker Jeremy doesn't have this kind of, doesn't have a Cintiq, which are the um, Wacom products that have screens on them or screens directly that you draw on. But Again, I used to not work on one of these. Um, this was a this was a purchase for me about two or so years ago. Yeah, about two years ago, I got this, and it's been it because it basically became a laptop and a tablet. It's been very helpful. I personally have loved using this.
I think there's a little bit too much shoulder right now. You can kind of see on the left side, despite the fact because of the symmetry, you can see how much I'm actually taking away right now. I want to use fill, just kind of like some of these crevices that could just be like filled in really quickly. That's the whole name of this. But now it feels a little bit smoother. It still feels a little bit awkward, but it's going to be awkward. Uh, because of the pose, this is this I would consider to be an unnatural pose for what we want our characters to do. Um, but it makes it that makes the animation and the rigging easier to start off with this. And like right now, he's standing with a little bit with heel up, but like that actually probably will change to where the heel will be down. And like the um, right here is the knee, and here's his hips, and he will actually probably be like farther down. Like if this is where he stands. His knee, his knee will probably hover right about here. And then... And like... Um, it will need to be modeled for our speech, but this... But that is something that we're saving because that becomes a... Exp um, for a small studio, it's an expensive pro um, thing to do. So we're saving that for special characters, and this currently is not, um, not a special character. So, what you see there, like where his mouth is, there is currently a crease, and that is it. Otherwise, it's basically soft clay. That is the extent of that. I kind of just added on a little bit of this so that it doesn't tra it does transition because it, it is my job trying to make this transition as, best, as smooth as possible. Or at least the transition that we want it to be. And in some cases, the um, in some cases this may not be like the best trend. Like I might leave a couple of these things. It won't smooth out absolutely everything. Because right now we're just want, we want to make sure we have um, models that can be rigged for an, before the animations to be started. So like, if I was moving on to texturing right now, I actually wouldn't be moving to texturing because right now it's important more to get the models done, and we'd have some substitute textures for the um, for the purpose of getting the models done or sent off, and then we'd have textures that we can do later, or work on later. Like, I, I, I don't know. I had a thought and then I completely lost it. You know what? Looking at these hands, they look big.
There we go. For some reason that ignore back faces thing had gotten checked and I didn't really... What movie is that? Is that from then? I don't think I recognized it as a movie quote. Just cut off really quickly. To actually get right in here. We need to scrape to smooth this out. Okay, I watched my ducks as a kid, and then I didn't watch it again. You know, like the arm still is kind of big and weird. I don't know what to do about it. But I will say I'm glad I'm happy with how this is connecting now. Like if I go there. For the most part, again. Excluding the hands, I'm not happy with my hands yet. And sometimes it takes a bit to get the hands right. I am rather happy with how this part is. I need to work, I need to work a little bit on the back side. Maybe not, not on the back side, but maybe just like right there where it connects. The other thing I do probably need to work on a little bit is this. The tail. So... Out of all of our characters, um, Stoats are one of the few characters, at least in our first game, that will have a, a completely fuzzy tail. Uh, most other ones don't. They don't have fur on their tails. They're just it's just skin. It's all pink. Because mice, mice and rats don't have um, fuzzy tails. And those are our primary characters. Kind of add a little bit too much in there, but that's what scrape is for.
kind of curious what it looks like in some of the other shaders now. Because you guys brought it up and it's like, oh. Wow, those are some more, much more defining lines up there. Interesting. I didn't even realize that. that like, by moving to different shaders, you can kind of see where some of these other lines might be. I probably should make a habit of doing this more often. And you can see it's kind of pixelated with how it's moving, and that's because I don't have um, the amount of triangles on this right now. Um, to do this kind of sculpting, it makes it requires it to be really high. And that's something that I'm aware of, and I'm actually okay with doing a high poly sculpt first. We want that kind of thing first, and then we do a low poly on top of this, and then bake, the, bake all the details from this. Like, for example, we won't have a, an edge in this, but instead we're going to use um, something called baking as part of this process to we'll get this line, this crease in there, to show on this. And the texture instead and it saves us a lot of memory a lot of space makes it a lot easier i don't know why i just did a loop de loop but for example if i start smoothing this out could make it just like that but i like how it looks like that better over back here could be smooth that more There we go. So you have this so far. But as you can see then there's a bunch of like just crease lines because I haven't gone and done the work of just mostly because I'm busy work of just trying to smooth everything out. It's like is it this is how much Just, just have to sit here, do this. But I'm gonna ruin it like in 20 seconds anyway, because I'm gonna come back over with the scraping tool. Do you guys want to see a really shiny stoat? This this might be one of the shiny stoats. Makes it look very, very shiny. But I, I like I said before, I prefer working in this. Um, if you guys have any more questions, we have about five minutes before the stream ends. Um, I can take questions now. Um, just so we can at least get this whole, we don't have to worry about forgetting anyone. And I, like, I'm gonna keep, probably keep working on the hands. Organize you guys haven't been here too long, but you guys did see some progress on this. Um, I think after I'm done with the sculpting process of getting this guy done, um, I actually end up moving over to another room and I, solid gold, yes, it's solid gold. <laughs> I moved to a different room to do the, within the same program this room right here and I can do stuff like making this and I just started adding a bunch of green squares on there and what this does is it actually helps to reduce all those polygons I said earlier that makes it a high resolution um, high resolution sculpt reducing it to this anyway don't need those just yet Could work on him in solid gold. Actually, that maybe work like this. There. 
Hey guys, we got a solid gold. Okay, I don't know what happened. Um, yeah. If we were using high detail, um, for example, like, in the, in the game we aren't going to have that many stoats, but we're going to have a lot of rats and a lot of mice. And so, because there's already a lot of mice, if you have ridiculously high detailed models of the mice, then that means the computer has to process each and every model. And so, the more models there are, if you have a bunch of models on the screen, it has to process each one, and that just reduces the speed and how good the game um, looks. Having too many models on the screen actually it runs the danger of crashing the, crashing either our programs or trying to make it, or even I think the game itself. And so it's one of the reasons why we do the process called retopology. It's a, which is what those green squares were earlier that I just did briefly. Um, I go through and I, and I cover this whole thing with a bunch of squares. And then, ba and then basically bake all of this detail into a flat surface that is using that retopology layers works with it to make the cool um, not, not nearly as detailed. But the t but all these details become textures, so they looks like they, so they basically become painted on. And yeah. I have a lot of work to do on these hands. They look way far too human right now. And that's not what we want for the game. I think I need to do actually a couple of concepts of them first before I actually go back to them. I thought I had them figured out and I was like, oh, nope, I, ha I don't. I don't have them figured out in the way I thought I did. I think that's probably going to be the end of the stream. Thank you guys for coming. This is our current model of a stoat. has a long tail. Just imagine. So the stoats are related to the otters. This is, and otters have the biggest tails. This is what it looks like for a stoat. Otter tails are going to be like way out here. Big rudder-like. Because that's exactly how they're described in the books. Big like rudders. Anyway, I hope you guys have great days. Thank you for coming and thank you for having me. I really appreciate having you guys here. Hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your weeks and have good weekends. Bye.